to design a simple mixer, we can start with an inverting op-amp buffer. The op-amp always tries to keep its inputs at the same voltage, so if the voltage at the negative input is higher than the positive input, the op-amp will lower its output voltage until the voltages at its inputs are equal. The two 100k resistors form a voltage divider between input 1 and the output of the op-amp. So if input 1 was at 1 volt, the op-amp needs to output minus 1 volt to get 0 volts at its negative input. The negative input of the op-amp acts as a virtual ground point, because the op-amp uses its output to always keep it at 0 volts. Now to turn this inverting buffer into something that could be called a mixer, all we need to do is to connect another input to the virtual ground point through a 100k resistor. Now what we have is an inverting summing mixer. So if for example input 1 and input 2 were both at 1 volt, the op-amp would have to fight twice as hard to keep the virtual ground point at 0 volts and would need to output minus 2 volts. Or if input 1 was at minus 3 volts and input 2 was at 2 volts, the op-amp would need to output 1 volt and so on. For audio signals, the output being inverted doesn't matter since we can't hear the difference, but if you intend to use this as a CV mixer, you want the input and output polarities to be the same, so your control voltages aren't flipped upside down. To achieve this, we can just add another inverting buffer on our output like this. With this circuit, we can mix together multiple signals, but it still isn't very useful. Usually you expect to be able to control the levels of different channels on a mixer. And we can achieve that by adding 100k potentiometers that work as adjustable voltage dividers between the inputs and the mixing resistors. I'm also going to get rid of input 2 for now, so we can focus on getting input 1 right first. Now that we have added this pot, we need to keep in mind that because of the negative input of our op-amp acting like a ground, R1 is effectively in parallel with the lower half of the potentiometer, so the output amplitude doesn't scale linearly with the rotation of the pot. For example, let's say we had 10 volts coming into input 1 and our volume pot set in the halfway position. We would have 50k of resistance between pins 1 and 2 and 50k between pins 2 and 3 on the potentiometer. Because R1 and the 50k resistance between pins 1 and 2 are effectively in parallel, they form a 33.3k resistance to ground, meaning we only get 4 volts out instead of the 5 volts you might expect. Here's a graph showing the relationship between the output voltage and the potentiometer's position. The pink line shows how our circuit behaves, and the blue one is what a completely linear response would look like. It's not off too much, and for mixing audio you wouldn't want the response to be linear anyways, since your ears perceive loudness logarithmically instead of linearly. If you were making a mixer with the sole purpose of mixing CV signals though, you might want it to be linear. To make the response more linear, we can try either replacing the potentiometer with one that's 10 times smaller, so a 10k, or replacing R1 with one that's 10 times bigger, so 1 mega ohm. Using a 10k potentiometer would reduce the input impedance of our circuit to roughly 9k depending on the position of the pot, loading down the outputs of our other modules more. I personally try to keep the input impedance of my modules above a minimum of 50k and I go for 100k whenever I can. But I'm not a cop, so you can do whatever. On the other hand, using a 1 mega ohm resistor could introduce Johnson noise, also known as thermal noise. I'm not super familiar with the specifics of it, but if you put a signal through a very high value resistor, you get some noise caused by electrons bouncing into each other. So it's generally good practice to avoid passing signals through such high value resistors. However, if you are only going to use the mixer for CV, having a little noise might not matter. If we wanted the level pods to control the signal in a way that makes the most sense to our ears, we would want it to increase the channel volume exponentially like this. To make the response approximately exponential, 
we'd want to make the ratio of the volume pot and the mixing resistor about 100 to 6.25. So for example with a 100k volume pot we'd have a 6.25k mixing resistor. With those values however the input impedance would be just 5.88k with the level pot at 100% which is way too low. To get the input impedance to a more acceptable 58.8k, we could multiply all the values by 10, so we'd end up with 1 mega on pot and a 62.5k resistor. However, a pot with this much resistance might generate Johnson noise, which we don't want in our audio signals. The best way to get an exponential-ish Volume control in a simple circuit like this is probably just to use logarithmic potentiometers instead of linear ones. The linear ones are much cheaper and easier to find and I want my mixer to be somewhat useful for both audio and CV, so I'm sticking with my linear 100k pots with 100k resistors. Now that we have decided all our component values, we can just copy and paste in as many input channels as we want. I'm going to go for 4, because that's how many I could comfortably fit on a 6HP panel. Also, if you want to add a master volume control, you can just replace the feedback resistor with a potentiometer like this. You can use the same value as on the mixing resistors, so you get unity gain when your master volume and channel volume are both at 100%. Or if you want more volume, you can use a higher value potentiometer. It's also a good idea to add a current limiting resistor before the output to protect the op-amp from shorts. Any value from 100 ohms to 1 kilo ohm should be fine. This is the final circuit I'm going to use for my mixer. I didn't include the master volume control because I want to save space in my module. You can of course do whatever you want if you're building your own. I designed this tripod layout in DIYLC based on my schematic. I highlighted the traces and jumpers connected to ground with black, minus 12 volts with blue and plus 12 volts with red. And I also made the mixing resistors green. I soldered the board off camera and it works like it should, so I'm going to jump straight to building the panel and finishing the module. I built my panels out of recycled sheet metal from an old PC case side panel. I've already cut it into long 128mm wide pieces, so when building a module I just need to cut off a piece of the desired length in HP to get a Eurorack compatible panel. I've designed a template in the Inkscape, printed it out and taped it to the edge of the sheet. I cut off the panel with a hacksaw and filed the edges smooth. I then cut off another template and tape it to the panel. I'm marking the center points of the holes on the template with a hammer and a nail to help drilling. I drill the mounting holes and pilot holes for the pots and jacks into the panel with a 3mm drill bit. and the holes for the audio jacks with a 6mm bit. 
and the holes for the pots with a 7mm bit. After that, I use the biggest bit my drill can fit to smooth out the edges of the holes. Then I mount the PCB to the panel with the potentiometers and screw on the nuts and jacks. It would have been better to mount the potentiometers to the panel before soldering them onto the PCB because they aren't perfectly flush with the panel. That causes tension on the PCB which could break the traces connected to the pots. I cut off this tab from the fourth pot with side cutters and mount it on the panel. I'm soldering the ground tabs of the audio jacks together with straightened paper clips. This isn't strictly necessary, since they're already connected through the metal panel, but it's good to have a solid ground connection anyways. Then I solder pin one of the remaining potentiometer to the ground wire with a resistor leg. I then use pieces of wire to connect the jacks and pots according to the schematic. I connect the ground wire to the ground on the PCB with a piece of black wire. This is the finished module, now let's test it. I'm adding knobs to the potentiometers. I didn't have four matching ones, so this will have to do for now.
Thanks for watching. You can leave any questions or suggestions in the comments or you can contact me through the link in the description.